Like I said, you can see in that uh, scripture, he said, watching with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. If you look at the mode, the, we call it the model prayer, our Lord's prayer. Every time Jesus was talking about praying, he never used the singular word. He used the plural. He will always say, our Father. He never taught his disciples to say, my Father. He taught them to say, our Father, give us this day our daily bread. Whenever you go to pray before God, I need to point this out to you. Whenever you go to pray before God, do not pray about just about yourself. Remember other people that are either in your, the same condition you are or other people that are suffering in, or need something or the other from the Lord. Always go with the mindset that you are going with the prayers of others, not just your own prayer. I was praying uh, recently for a child. I was praying recently for a child. Then the Lord reminded me about another child. I was actually praying for my own child. Then the Lord now reminded me of another child that I should pray for that child. So God always wants us to come to him, not only with our own issue. Most believers in these last days, uh, they are falling into that temptation of uh, where the Bible says men will be lovers of themselves. But God is saying that we should come with the, with the interest of others in our heart. So prayer or supplication is entreating uh, uh, and uh, pleading with the Lord on behalf of yourself or for uh, another person. In also Philippians uh, chapter 4 verse 6, the Bible says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Alright, we move to the next one. The next one is the prayer of declaration, which is almost the same thing like the prayer of uh, intercession. But the prayer of declaration, it's, it's inside of this we find the prayer um, that we call uh, spiritual warfare. When you talk of spiritual warfare, most people go to pray and they say they are doing uh, spiritual warfare prayers. They go with the mindset of them going to fight the battle. No, when you're doing spiritual warfare, you don't go with the mindset that you're going to fight the enemy, you're going to fight the devil, you're going to fight uh, whatever. You're not going to fight, you are going to proclaim the victory that Jesus won at the cross. You are, go you are going there to tell the devil to take his hands off. Wherever he has put his hands on, the Bible says the Son of God was made manifest to destroy the works of the devil. You are only going there to tell the devil that he has been defeated and you tell him to take his hands off. You are going there to declare in the name of the Lord. So the prayer of uh, declaration is a declaration of truth, is a declaration of what must be, is a declaration of what has been finished already. Jesus won the battle. Jesus won. The Bible says he, he triumphed over principalities and put them to open shame at the cross. So what other battle do you want to fight? You are going there. Spiritual warfare is actually going with the weapons of warfare which the Lord has won, won and given to you. Going there to dismantle. And when, 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 a, when an army goes to a country to invade a country, and takes over, um, takes over that particular country, defeats the, the authority in that country, defeats the rulers in that country. What happens after the war has been won? What happens is that that army now sends an occupational force. The occupational force is what now sets up a government, maybe a temporary government, sets up an administration and starts to administer that occupied country. So that occupational force is not actually going to fight a real battle, it's just going to enforce the victory that has been won by the real army. So Jesus won the victory for me and you, and we are the occupational force. That is why Jesus said, occupy till I come. So we are here to, we are on this earth to occupy, to take back what Jesus has won for us already on this earth. So, the prayer of declaration, you know, let's go to Job chapter 22, verse 28. Job 22, verse 28, the Bible says, Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy, thy ways. Then in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 21, the Bible says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. 
then I finish with uh, with this scripture uh, with this scripture that Jesus in uh, Matthew chapter 21 verse 19 and when he saw a fig tree in the way he came to it and found nothing there but leaves only and, and said unto it let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever Jesus declared and some people call it judgment it's all about the same uh, direction of prayer. Jesus declared, that is, when you decree a thing, you are speaking to a thing. You are speaking to the devil or you are speaking to situation or circumstances. It's a downward prayer. That is, you are seated with, with the Father and you are decreeing things to come to pass. He said, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. So we need to understand, for example, somebody is sick.